All right, so uh, every request has a response, and there's a lot more that's kind of going on beneath the scenes than most of us are aware of. And you can use Chrome and DevTools, the network tab, to kind of look at a request and a response. And so we were just looking at that with Nina and in the last example. So I went there to Google.com. I could open up more tools, developer tools, or that's going to be Option Command I. So Option Command I opens up DevTools and on the Network tab, nothing's there, but if I refresh this page or Command Shift R on the Mac, I get all this stuff and I can look at these different resources, right? And I can see some interesting stuff. Like there's Google, the method was Git. Well, okay, I was getting something, that kind of makes sense. And this will, this will be, you know, sometimes we talk about methods like post. And that's when you're posting something to a server. And so when we do RESTful, RESTful web applications, we will respond differently to a GET request versus a POST request. Right? Somebody's posting data. We'll handle that different. And then there's a status. So we have status codes. 200 is OK. Right? And you could go see what all the different status codes are. So if you go to uh, godoc.org, forward slash net HTTP, we have all those declared as constants, all the status codes. The 200 is everything okay. There's a couple of different ones. 300 is like, you know, hey, this is somewhere else. Move permanently. You know, uh, 302 found at a different location, I guess. And then we have, you know, like the 400, like 404, status not found, right? 500 internal server errors down here. Interestingly, there's some pretty wacky ones. Status teapot. It's an April Fool's joke, but it's still in there. Twitter used to have a status 420 for people who are doing things which are kind of dopey. <laughs> They'd give you a status 420. Uh, so, but that, that, you know, there is no 420 here. Uh, status 420, you must be high. And uh, here's a uh, my car's license plate. You guys know uh, you can never step in the same river twice. You ever heard that po poem or quote? Some famous guy said that. You know, like from Greek days. Where are my photos, man? my buddy's bus and uh, he just finished remodeling it and took it to a mechanic to get the last bit done the mechanic's house burned down along with the bus he didn't have insurance on it it's about a $30,000 remodel job yeah yeah I felt bad for him we're getting close to it there it is HTTP 301. Move permanently. It's fun. Just because you have a license plate like that doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Has anyone said anything to you about it? Like, how do you know? No. Uh, so, you know, and you could also, when you're here, so we have method, we have a status code. You could also click on the document and you could see the headers. So here we have headers. And so we were just looking at that, like content type, text, HTML. And so this is just info, information, right? Like um, we have down below the request header, right? Where the request user agent and then response headers, content type. So just interesting. Method get this URL. And so there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And so you can also use a command called curl at the command line to see stuff. So we could go to the command line and I could say curl dash V and you can look up what all this stuff means. I don't know what the V flag does. And I'm, oh, I got a control C out of my thing. There we go. 
curl dash v go lang dot org. And uh, and so it found the IP address. And so the way the web works is we have domains, and then we have domain name servers. So you enter a domain, and then it goes and looks up the IP address, the internet protocol address. And the IP address is the address is like your phone number. It's like your phone and your phone number. You don't know people's phone numbers anymore. You look at your iPhone or your Android, and you just like look for their name, and you push their face, right? And then it dials the number for you. You don't know IP addresses, you just know domain names. You enter the domain name and then it dials the number for you. Okay, so that's kind of what domain names are. They're like mnemonic devices to help us get to places for numbers we don't want to have to remember. All right, and then it says connected to that. And uh, here's my request header. I made a request, it's a git request. The URL I requested is here and we're using HTTP 1.1. And there's a new HTTP. It's 2.0. And there's HTTP2. And so that's super fast and super better. And the host is Golang. And the user agent, meaning who asked for this, is curl. That was me. And then here is the response. So here's the response header. The response line. This is the request line. This is the status line. HTTP1, 302. That's the status code and found, right? Location, golang.org, type, text HTML, right? And so it's sending it back to my browser, and then my browser will be like, okay, this is text HTML, I'm gonna display it. And server, Google front end, length 42, content length 42, and then done. And so there's headers that go with a request and a response. So that's kind of fun, and so I just put that in. And, uh, <clears throat> This is the request line, and here is the status line or the response, and I put status there, okay? And um, I used to have this picture on my computer. Let me see if it's still here. Pause the video and find it. All right, so here's a graphical representation of what that might look like. You have a browser, makes a request. There's a request line and HTTP headers, right? And there could be payload right there, like I'm sending form data. And the server makes a response, and there's a, I think of it as a response line, but it's called a status line, and HTTP headers, and then content. Pretty straightforward. And we already saw the headers, right? But that first line is just called a status line. So we're just getting familiar with the terminology. And, um, and that status line has certain formatting. It's the method, and then there's a space, and then there's a request target, and then there's a space, and then there's the HTTP version, and then there's a carriage return line feed. I was like, I don't know, what's a CR? That's like Windows, and then LF is Mac, or I don't know, it's carriage return line feed. And then the same thing down here, here's the status line, and it's the version, HP version, a space, the status code, 302, a space, and the reason phrase, a space, and then a carriage return line feed. Okay. And if you go and you look at this stuff, you could start to see some of the specifications. Inter Internet Engineering Task Force.org, IETF.org. And you can see. Request line begins with a method blah, 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 method token, followed by a single space, the, the request target, another single space, the protocol version it ends with curlf, <laughs> carriage return line feed. Okay. And then if we look at this other one, Status lines, the HTTP, HTTP version, uh, the first line of response message is status line, consisting of the protocol version, a space, a status code, another space, possibly empty textual phrase describing the status code, and ending with the carriage return line feed. Cool.
So let's keep learning. And let's learn a little bit about HP architecture. And I think we'll do that in the next video.